How can we forgive what seems unforgivable, the murderers, rapists, and child molesters? Okay, so this is a really good question. And I wanna do it justice by not just dismissing this in a fluffy way. So there are people out there who are having major challenges and major misidentifications that cause them to have even more challenging experiences in life. They do not believe they're, as we were talking about, a holy child of God. They don't believe they're, they're worthy of the good, the true, and the beautiful. They believe they were dropped definitely in multiple ways ever since the, the first idea of being separate from the divine of themselves. They believe that all kinds of people have dropped them and dismissed them and, and left them to their own devices. They are run by fear and their lives are motivated often by pain. And so those are the very people that are giving dramatic, the most dramatic calls for love. They've, they've shut down their true receptor where the divine speaks to us in our heart of hearts. And they've, they've allowed for their selves to feel atrophied in that capacity to connect with the divine. Because they're in the world in a, in a way that they're constantly feeling and hearing and, and acknowledging fearful and painful things. I've done work in prisons with people, maximum security prisons with people who are, are labeled murderers. And I've worked with people who've been at both ends of, of things like child molestation and the, the more heavy grievances of the world. And what I found in approaching those experiences from a place of staying in heaven and calling people to my world rather than joining them in that world of illusion is not only was it um, captivating to be able to have the inside stories where you don't just get headlines, you get the entire story of someone's trajectory towards experiences like that, towards being either the victim or the one who's victimizing. And you can watch how separation has reigned in their lives. It doesn't make them any less a holy child of the divine it makes them confused and feeling as though they're identifying with what is separate from their true selves. When we get to a place where we're no longer fearful of the world because we're keeping ourselves on a high flying trajectory, we're keeping ourselves identified with the divine, we're listening very deliberately to the voice of our own best interest. Then we won't feel fearful of those circumstances and we be able to view them more objectively and intimately. I've been fortunate that I've had a lot of opportunity to view those kinds of experiences that people have had that are very harrowing in life and, and fearful and dramatic in life from the place of appreciation, from the place of recognizing that they are truly a child of the divine in a total misidentification. And yet, quite often, the person who is in the most darkness can most easily see the light when it arrives, a way out when it arrives. It's when someone's been buffeted about in that tumultuous ocean and they're like capsizing and trying to get their breath in the dark night of the storm and then there's a lighthouse here that they not only notice the lighthouse, they're going for the lighthouse. They've, they could feel they have no other resort. And so, the challenge is, is that when people are labeled as the dysfunctional ones in life and the, and the demented ones and the ones that are not worthy of forgiveness in life, the ones that promote a lot of pain and give the greatest calls for love, quite often it's harder for them to find the light because people stay away from that. I would say this, that the people who are meant to arrive to be the light, if, if anyone is in darkness, of any kind, there's one very effective prayer that the divine will always answer, and that's help. But from a heart that's surrendered, that if you're really, really asking deep, 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 and, and going high, high, high above the chaos of the world, and you're going deep, deep, deep within you to connect those two things, if you say help from this like vertical place, not from the horizontal, you're not asking for help from the world, the divine will insert 
the, the, the angels, whether they be people who are incredible, noble, wonderful people who show up that can help in those circumstances to help them see the light. And they will be in a place where often they come out the other side of the problem or pain. One thing to remember here is there is no death that all that is is a release from the, the captivating dream of being in the world and in the body. And so the perpetrators and the ones who are the victims are ultimately gonna wind up free on the other side of what they realize on the other side out of this captivating experience of being in a body. That the very thing that A Course in Miracles says all the time you cannot ever leave home. None of this that appears to be happening to anyone here is real. You are always abiding in the heart of the divine. You are at one in perfect peace. This is an impossible dream. Some people have to dream it very dramatically to awaken. Other people have to answer very dramatic calls for love to awaken. And so people are doing a dance out there and some people are really stepping on toes, having a hard time learning, learning the steps. If we just get back to our own self and say help, or I surrender myself as capably to the divine and get in this vertical experience where judgment and guilt don't reign, then you'll see that there's always a vehicle and a way to come home. And, and the miracles will appear to pave your way. Everyone gets out of this alive. <laughs> Everyone gets to a place of even greater life and greater joy and an eternal experience of this. So keep that in mind when you're viewing things that are dramatic and, and really tumultuous in the world, that everyone's doing the best they can to awaken. Sometimes more dramatic things awaken more powerful and more powerful love within people, hopefully at best. And sometimes it allows for us to face things that we would normally never want to face in order to come through them in a more powerful way to gain more insights and to become hopefully on the other side, a more loving, forgiving, self-aware and self-centered person taking our eyes off the world as our place that we find the ultimate answers. They don't exist there. The ultimate answer exists here within you.